Today is June the 27th, 2023. My name is Tanya Fincham. I'm with Oklahoma State University with the Oral History Program in the library. And with me is June Kesh. Kesh. No, gosh. Gosh. Like you say, gosh. Okay. Gosh. gosh. Just plain gosh. Okay. Gosh. And her daughter, Donna. And we are in Stillwater, Oklahoma. And this interview will be part of our collection the Oklahoma History Collection in the library. So thank you for inviting me here. Let's begin with learning a little bit about you. Uh, tell us a few things from your childhood. Tell her about your childhood growing up. Oh my. I was number seven of 11 that my parents raised. And um, uh, we moved quite often. My dad was a um, sharecropper. He would go and find us a little home, and we would work the land and take part of it and get the rest as an owner. And we did that most of our lives. So I have lived, especially all over Creek County, and all the way down to Texas line. <laughs> we went there one time and I was pretty small. I saw on a picture that um, in 33, we was getting ready to go to Western Oklahoma. We knew that uh, the cotton was good and we'd have a job, we'd pick cotton. And um, by the way, my father never drove, he never drove a car. We went in a wagon mm -hmm. with horses. We took our cows with us, and that's the way we traveled. And um, it was fun for us kids. <laughs> we could run along or we could ride, you know. And, um, we just got set up in a home down there. It was, I'm not sure when it was, except uh, I was about six. And uh, I wouldn't remember it because I had the dust on. Mm -hmm. it, uh, my dad and my brother had gone to plow the field, get it ready. And um, it started getting dark. And Mother said, it's a dust storm. It was a clay dust. It was red. The cloud was, it was pitiful. And she looked out at Dad now. And he had, at the barn, he had fixed a, a, a rope for, that was sometimes it had snowed. They put a rope from the barn to the house. And the man takes the cattle and puts them in the barn. And then they can't find their way home into the porch. And they walk up that, holding on to that rope. But that was uh, the scariest I ever was, I think, was that huge sky. Mother let us let it all see it. And by the way, we had barrels that felt like you get a, uh, what do we call them? Oil, oil barrels. That uh, she had cleaned out. And we had one in the house, we filled it with water from the well. And one outside and saw in the barn for the cattle and the horses. And um, it, uh, I don't remember how long it lasts, but it was way too long. When it hit our house, my older sisters and uh, had nailed the sheets, wet sheets around the windows after they made sure that they get all the air outside. And it got completely dark. And that was in the daytime. With all of that red dirt hitting the house. 
-hmm. It was terrible. I don't remember how long it lasts. If I'd been older, I think I'd get a little bit of <laughs> But do you do you remember what you did? What I did? Yeah. I watched after my little two year old brother. Mm -hmm. He was mine. My sister just older me. She's spanky. <laughs> and I never did. I would hug him. And uh, so that was my job to take care of him. <laughs> well, where in West Oklahoma were you? Where where were what town were you close to? Was it, it was in Western Oklahoma, probably Eric's. Uh, is it down in that part? Okay. And uh, we didn't stay there very long. My dad, uh, he just loaded us back up and we went back to Grandpa's and he had uh, two big tents he cut out in the field. And one of them had a floor. Mother had a little stove there. And uh, we spent uh, maybe one year or part of the year there until my dad could find something better, which we ended up, uh, we lived around Arlington, um, Oklahoma. It was just a small community that had a, a nice uh, school that the government had made the schools. And um, then there was a grocery store and uh, they didn't have a church house, but I went back later on to check things out. Because there's a Calvary. Um, Mm -hmm. graveyard. It's called Calvary. It's still down there. My grandparents are buried there. I want to go back. So. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, oh gosh. What did you do? Well, what would you do for school? Uh, what did you do for school? Oh, we went to the yeah, we went to the school. That was my first year. Going to school was in that nice work home. And um, I went one year, and my dad heard about his mother's brother, the mother's sister of her husband, lived in Creek County. And that's where we went. We worked for Mr. Health and Fisher, who has his children, grandchildren, still has the farm. And uh, they raised sheep. He had a home for us and a big arm. And that's where we stayed for seven years. So uh, that was, uh, I was probably in the seventh grade. And uh, Dad found another house because it was closer to uh, um, maybe. Okay. Maybe Oklahoma is not there anymore. They had two grocery stores, and um, uh, Mother was upset because none of them had a church close. But we had traveling ministers that we go to and put up arbors. Dad would help, and my brothers built the arbor. Mm -hmm. And that's where we go to church. The last one we went to before we went to California, was uh, um, at Fisher's place. Let's see it. We, we made it close to maybe about a mile from maybe. And that's where I finished school. And then um, we would walk all the way to 48 Highway and um, go to church arbor, Dad helped fix it. Mm -hmm. And we would walk every night because they didn't have a car. And when they got one, when I was 14, I drove it. <laughs> I told Mother, I said, I'm going to drive that car. She said, you better park it for Dad 
had the best. Dad didn't ride it was on further step. Back it in, and you had to go <coughs> so out to go back, back it in, and cut the box under so it wouldn't come out of hell. So my sister got in with me. And by the way, she was older when she never did. She never got on the wheel. She didn't have nothing to talk. So I took her where she wanted to go. <laughs> but I made it fine. Dad never knew anything about it. So, it's just a kind of hectic, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, we moved, uh, let's see, from there. And you know, we, we, Dad found another place. And we were in the, we got to the eighth grade. My sister, older than me, she wouldn't go to school. She cried all the time, so they sent her home. She wanted to wait till I was. So we, we were both in the same grade. <laughs> and then, um, we uh, moved up north, 50 acres. <coughs> My dad didn't have to pay rent if we would put a fence around it. So instead of going to high school, my sister and I helped him build an old bar for a fence. It's not any fun. <laughs> and got that, after we got that fixed, they decided to go to California for a visit. Well, in that time, I met my husband, and he had just brought his mother home from California, and he said that he kind of fell for him. I really liked him. He was very polite and nice. So um, after we dated a while, uh, I told him he was going to California, and we talked to my dad, and he said, I have been out there since I was 16. I know the way. He says, is it all right if I take a couple of your daughters and we all go along together? <laughs> That's what we did. And your dad said yes. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> but he, he knew he liked him and he trusted him and he should have felt he was a good one. But, um, um, and they could water. <laughs> I'm thinking, did, did your sister like him too? No, she just <laughs> she would not have anything to do with any guy. Yeah. I had a different boyfriend before, <laughs> but she never liked him. <laughs> I was just thinking competition between sisters. Well, you know, who was. 13 months older than Linda. She, uh, they, people thought went they were twins. We went to California. My husband, he wasn't my husband then. He stayed, his brother lived in Bakersfield. We went all to uh, Vanessa or, or Selma that way. That's where mother's folks all were. And my oldest brother and one of my sisters lived there. So, um, Went up there and he came. He would come on a weekend and visit me. And he asked my dad for you, asked me. My dad said, you know you're getting the best one I got and you better be good to her. <laughs> he said, don't ever give her. Now dad didn't tell me he told me. My husband told me later on, he said, um, your dad told me not to ever slap you. And he said, I won't ever slap you unless you slap me first. <laughs> so we never slapped each other. <laughs> we lived 57 years and he had a heart attack and passed away. Well, how did he ask you? He said, let's get in the hotel. And I said, I don't know why. <laughs> he said, 
Well, it's too far to drive up here over the weekend, and I want to take you home with me. And um, I said, well, I think uh, that'd be all right. <laughs> Very romantic. <laughs> I don't think he ever told me he loved me, but he did uh, uh, when he was dating me. Mm -hmm. He, had, he didn't know me but a month when he told me he was in love with me. Kind of floored me. I really liked him. And um, how had you met? Um, how had you met? How did you meet? How did you meet Daddy? Me too. How did you meet Dad? Yeah. Tell her about the blind date. The what? Remember your first date? With Dad? Oh, that was, that was very, <laughs> and on Saturdays, we got to go to town, and we were both, my sister was, I was almost 18, and she was almost 19. So we just told Dad, we're going to have to do some things our way. He said, I'm not worried about you, just get yourself home. You know, well, every Saturday night, they had a princess theater that, uh, that you could go to, to a movie about 10 o'clock and get out about one. And my sister and I was walking down the street and I knew all the guys in the car and I knew who was driving it was Albert, my husband. And he had the Lashley, he had Melvin Wright, and um, five minutes, they were just cruising around. They saw us and they drove in and they said, Hey, we're going to drive around town, look at the town over. You girls want to go? And my sister said, Sure. She hopped in the back seat with Melvin because she liked him. And, uh, Bill Ashley got out. I thought, well, I don't really know Albert, so I will just uh, maybe Bill will ask me. I knew that he he had just broke up with his for. But, uh, when we got to the, we drove around. They drove around to nightclub. My sister and I would go in. Mm -hmm. Dad ever told me that he was a cat bit. And they went inside. I felt sure they would have been there five minutes, probably two. Anyway, um, when they got back, we went, when we drove into the movie and he parked in front, he hopped out and bought a ticket for everyone of us. My husband, and he wanted to go with me. <laughs> and uh, all of them left except up with her boyfriend, my sister. And um, so it left me and Albert. And then we went inside and he gave them all a ticket. But the other boys went down to shoot pool. And my husband and I went to the movie. And we, we uh, but I. Now don't that, tell everything. <laughs> that. that First time he kissed me. Mm -hmm. see him. That kind of shocked me before I, I thought he really knows how to kill. <laughs> was that the, was that the, your first time? That was the first time I dated. Him. No, it wasn't the first time I dated. It was the first time I uh, and then kissed. It, uh, uh, I yeah, it was the first time I dated. But I knew his folks, all of them, so we knew he was a pretty good kid. And when he took us home, he um, um, wanted to know it was Christmas Eve when we did all this. And Christmas Day, he said, we will go to, uh, I want you to go meet my mother. Uh, and he said, we'll be at the neighbor to Charlie Webb's. And I said, no, I don't go. Charlie Webb teased me all the time and then embellished me. 
<laughs> I never told him that till later on. But I told him, I said, no, it's Christmas and I have to read my books. And um, he took a lot of pictures. I've got pictures of him. But, um, he came up that evening um, with a couple more guys and my um, men both would look, go riding with them and get the movie. And we did. So after that, it was just several times that he'd keep picking me up and go somewhere. And then, then all that time, Dad now was thinking about going to California. And then one day, um, Dad asked him, or he asked Dad if, if my sister and I could ride with him. And that's why he went. Why was your father going to California? They wanted to visit him. Mom was going to visit all of her folks. Her mother was there, and two brothers, about three sisters, all lived around the Nest Overdue in Sacramento. Had they moved from Oklahoma? No, they went out there for a visit. No, but her, no. her, 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 her parents, her family. Grandma's. Why did uh, Grandma Winnie and Aunt Goldie and them go to California? Why did she? Why did they go to California? Aunt Goldie and Grandma Winnie. Oh, they moved out there. They lived out there. They moved from Oklahoma out there a long time before we did. And Mother didn't get to see them only when they would, one or two of them would come and visit. But why, why did they move? There wasn't any work, any way to make a living in Oklahoma. They wanted to go for a better life. And it was a better life for mom and dad, too. So for a while, we came back to Oklahoma. <laughs> what did they do out there? Uh, worked the fields, mostly. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, one of Mama's brothers had a business in the Dexco, and a lot of them worked that way. And when we was out there before I got married, we uh, worked in the peaches, and we worked. Uh, uh, we could climb the trees and get the cherries, and um, uh, just just worked like that, you know. The first job we had was uh, hauling beads with a shore metal hoe. That lasted one day. Yes. <laughs> it was, uh, we got 25 cents for a row. You couldn't make over 75 cents. They were a quarter of a mile long. You had to be down and fished over all the time. Daddy saw us, he said, come on, we can do better than this. So we all went up north. Um, it was quite hectic, but it was interesting. I look back and I'd live with him. Did they call you Okies? Oh yeah. Most of them was Okies herself. <laughs> there's a lot of Okies. <laughs> By the way, there's in that book about the wind patch. When Donna was born, she was born up north at Mount Marysville. And um, six years later, Sherry was born down at Bakersfield, the uh, um, Spices at Maternity Hospital. And um, went to the hospital about midnight and woke up about 10 o'clock next morning and this baby was just screaming her head off and I told the nurse, I said, what is wrong with that baby? And she said, she's been waiting on a mother. And she, she brought her to me. She's been screaming at her. <laughs> <laughs> no, she said, they're a blessing. I moved in with them. But so my house. Well, let's not get there yet. So you, how long were you in California? Married? 
How long did you and Dad live in California? Uh, oh my, we lived out there 12 years. We went to Arkansas, the same man he worked for, um, bought a home in uh, close to Bakersfield with the dairy. Oh, to Fayetteville, Arkansas. We moved from, Bay, from Lamont to- Oh yeah, uh, we moved to Arkansas, sorry. That, uh, that's all right. We loaded up what we had in a pickup truck and trailer. And green, green pickup truck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was quite a life. Oh. Uh, we lived there one year, and uh, I told my husband, I said, you can stay if you want to. I'm going to Oklahoma. And he said, I'm glad to hear that because I was thinking the same thing about you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you didn't like Arkansas? It, it just worked him so. Yeah. He's 14 hours a day, seven days a week on a dairy. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got 200 a month and the propane cost us a hundred dollars. <laughs> so we was trying to get out a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. But um, we bought our first home in Zapata in 1960. Okay. We got married for 40, 47. 48. No, I was born in 48. 47. 47. 47. 47. Yeah, she was born. <laughs> I knew that was. <laughs> yeah. And. Um, where did you get married? Where did you get married? At Reno, Nevada. Yeah. Did you elope? I elope certificate. <laughs> you eloped? Well, he asked Dad. Oh. He came and on Saturday and spent the night there at the desk with them. And then um, we got next morning and broke this. So in the night to get to Reno, we drove he wrote, drove a 36 store. And um, um, we had a motel, believe it or not. He slept there and I slept here. <laughs> Next morning, I was dressed to get married and he was too. And we clocked out. <laughs> he said, I don't know what those people thought of us. <laughs> what did you wear? Oh, I had a pretty gown. They couldn't. My two aunts took me for two days. We could not find a gown anywhere around Modesto and all those little towns. So I got a light blue long gown. And then uh, we, there was a couple got married right ahead of us, and then we got married, and we drove down to Yosemite Park, and that's where we had a cabin. That's nice. Yeah. The next day we decided we wasn't going to any more restaurants. It's all we done. We bought things at the little grocery store and went out to the park, nice place. Fix the table, and he got some bananas. He liked bananas, and uh, thank goodness he did because we just sat down to eat, and uh, I heard real peak. Don't look up too bad. It was <laughs> he grabbed the bananas and went out to meet them. <laughs> I went and got in the car. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, the bears left when they got to the bananas. And we went from there to my folks, spent the night there, but that was kind of hard for me to <laughs> And they went on to make a seal. Mm -hmm. And we lived there, and folks lived there. And um, it's all been quite interesting. And here I end up in. Stillwater. I've always wanted to live in Stillwater. Why? 
Well, well, we'll get there. From so from Arkansas, 1960, you moved to Oklahoma. Just in 60. Let's see, I was uh, uh, nine years old. So the, uh, well, it was in, it was in the 50s, huh? That's how it is. Arkansas, Mom. We are in South Paul for 20. Oh gosh, 20 something, you know. Yeah, uh, I think I was born in 1960. And we couldn't do anything there, so we sold it and and bought a house at close to Sherry. Okay. She found it for us, so we yeah. started. And we spent well, about 30 years there. I may be off on the wall. That's okay. So when you moved to Oklahoma, when you moved back to Oklahoma, what did your husband do for work? That's right. Mm-hmm. He worked for Liberty Glass. Okay, so he, he got out of the field then. Mm-hmm. And my promise to him when we got married that I would stay home and take care of the children and not work out. And uh, I owned baby. Sound good to me. But I took in earnings. He, he told me, he said, I'll always have your car. So, you know, you could take the girls do what you need. But don't, until the girls leave home, I don't want you working out. So I didn't. Keep your hand down so she can see your face. Okay. <laughs> but um, um, so you took in ironing? You, you ironed for other people? I took in earnings. And she People today that. don't know what that is. I sold Avon <laughs> on the side. Yeah. Okay. I did that. They kept wanting me to leave my family and, and go to uh, um, and train in Kansas City, and I wouldn't do it. So I, I quit selling my mm-hmm. Um she wanted me to take her place, the, the lady that was over all of us. And uh, we would meet, and it was very interesting. I met a lot of people, mm-hmm. a lot of nice people. And then, then when Sherry left for college, my youngest one, we, uh, I told him, I said, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to go find job. Now he kind of ground, he thought I was too old for him. He said, okay, Mom, whatever you want. <laughs> so I started in, and they told me they'd hire me over at Pepsi-Cola just before you get into Tulsa. But I had to come work at 2 o'clock in the morning. I said, no, I'm not interested. So I found another one for this opening, making boxes. But they didn't know when they would open. I said, no, I'm going to keep looking. And um, I got home, two of my sisters come by. They always did when they went to work at the glass. And my sister said, did you try to find on a pottery? And I said, no, I hadn't even thought of it. And when I went out there, the lady that loved my Avon, her husband was sitting at the desk. He's the one to hire me. I thought, uh oh. And he said, Well, it's nice meeting you. My wife just loves you. <laughs> he said, I'm going to put you to work. So, <laughs> so he hired me. And I worked there for, I don't know, 50 years. And in the office or sure no on the line what what did you do there uh, oh we did when the molds would come out in the clay we would trim them and wash them up and send them down the line mm-hmm. and he was he wanted me to take the manager's place and uh, i i didn't uh, know what to do you know i didn't didn't want that to be 
over for all the people. Some of them didn't like the other one. And uh, I was thinking about it. But in the meantime, Sherry came home from college and she, she uh, uh, went to work in the office with the glass. And she called me just before I got off work at uh, Frank on Potter at three o'clock. She said, Mother, I'm, I'm going, she worked in the office, she said, I'm going to hire three ladies. Would you like to be one of them? And I said, well, your dad didn't much want me out there. It was so hot. She said, well, no, it's hot. We'll be working anyway. And um, so I just clocked out, went by, and they sent me to get my checkup. I, was, I had a job at Little Glass the next day. <laughs> I stayed there almost 10 years, and they sold it. My husband took an early retirement. About when was that? When? When did he retire? Dad was 51. Oh, so early, early then. Yeah. And uh, it was, what, about 1976, somewhere in there. So before they had the strike, they had a strike. It was in during the strike. Yeah. When did we buy the house in Sepulchre? I was in uh, seventh grade, so that was 1960 okay. when we bought the house. Yeah, when you did all that, we, we, uh, um, but yeah, Dad was about 51 when they went on strike. And, mm -hmm. uh, you remember I, that? I lost the dog. <laughs> the, the, the strike. When Libby Glass had a strike. Remember when you and Dad went on strike at Liberty Glass? How much? Remember at Liberty Glass? You are vibrating, woman. You're vibrating. Mm -hmm. But anyway, Liber remember when Liberty Glass went on strike? Yeah, I was there when they went on strike. Yeah. yeah. And, um, but I didn't. We didn't, uh, we walked the line. He did for quite a while. And uh, uh, I didn't always go with him. <laughs> uh, why, why were they striking? Um, for higher wages, I think. Yeah. And better working. I was on a picket line. And we, us ladies, we would sit on the hood of the car, you know. <laughs> And my boss from Ferngola come by and a whole bunch out there. He said, "June, come back to work. We need you." <laughs> he said, "Why don't you go back out there?" I said, "Because my husband's here and he's walking." Home. <laughs> well, what what did he do there? What did Albert do there? Oh, he did everything. He's, he uh, worked in the hot end zone, and um, they found out he was a mechanic. They had him doing that. He, he didn't like being a mechanic. He did it for himself, but he loved the truck. And then they had an opening for the loading uh, on the dock, and he took that. He loved it. Mm -hmm. So he drove it for and and I was doing all the dirty work <laughs> when I was there almost five years I got to bid on the job and someone was retiring from the palletizer and I bid on that and got it so that was up high as long as we come in and get on the platform and then uh, come down and I would guide them with my machine, and they get on the pallet. You put a, another car go down. You can, when you got eight sacks, then you send it down, and it would strap them. You know, so it was uh, it's noisy, real noisy. Was it milk bottles? 
What kind of bottle? Oh, I, I mostly pop bottles when I was there. They had a few, uh, I, um, oh, bless, milk jugs. Mm -hmm. I, those were interesting, but they were quit doing them out of and started the plastics, you know. Uh, so we could just have pop bottles. Okay. All kinds. What kind of uniform? What did you wear to work? Something cool. <laughs> we wore really jeans or something, and a, something cool. Anything you wanted though? It wasn't it was not a uniform. No uniform. No, 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 no. Uniform. no. no it just uh, whatever you wanted to. Some of them looked ridiculous. <laughs> But it was um, quite a lot. Did you ride to work together? Oh, yeah. You did. He made sure I was, a couple of his bosses told him, why do you have, I was checking in, because he was checking out, and he waved at me and come over. Bosses teased him, said, if she is mine, by golly, she'd be with me. <laughs> so he said, why don't you talk to him and get on with me? And so that we did that. So the girls had gone, just me and him. I told him, I said, I'm glad because we had a poodle in the house <laughs> and it would bark all the night. It's, it would get on my bed. And I guess it's watching after him while he was gone. She wouldn't do that if he was there. <laughs> Her name was Tilly. <laughs> Tilly? I'm just tired of this. <laughs> I want to back up though. What was your maiden name? My maiden name? Yeah. Kennedy. C A L A D Y. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. There's a lot of them around. Spells a little different. That uh, Dad said he's had it all his life. He came from Arkansas. <laughs> well, where was your mother from? My mother. Mm -hmm. Where was she from? Uh -huh. uh, yeah, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. And what was her maiden name? Smith. Smith. Mm -hmm. A lot of those. Shows. A lot of those. Yes. I got some of those. Likes Smith. <laughs> Is your name Smith? I've got some Smiths in the family. My grandmother was. Oh, all right. Great grandmother. My great grandmother was. Oh, what was the name? Could be mine. <laughs> Her name was Martha. Martha Smith, North Carolina. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. They said with people from Oklahoma. Um, Wendy May was my grandmother's name. So that's where your Willie came from. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of. Willie? Yeah. Winnie. Hers was Winnie. 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 At the, well, let's get on record where your name came from. Willie. I have that aunt. All right. Tell she, the story. Tell the story about Aunt Willie. About who? About Aunt Willie naming you. She wants that. Uh, Aunt Willie that named me? Uh huh. Tell that yeah, story. Well, that's that mother's sister, one of them's name was Tina Evelina. I didn't know that. Because when she started the school in first grade, she told the teacher her name was Willie. You didn't have to have a birth certificate. And Grandma asked her, said, Why did you tell her that? She said, Because I love that name. <laughs> she carried it all her life. And uh, whenever Dad passed away, she told me her name was Tina. Um, and then on her 95th birthday, she had sent me a letter. And on the back side of the letter, that, that big white envelope, she wrote, Willie. I love our name, don't you? That well, <laughs> she loved it. 
and, you, I, and you did. I don't like I still don't. <laughs> when I worked out, I told my name was Sharon. So I told the kids when I, I paid, I said, um, I don't know why they're telling my name is Willie or June. I said, one thing about it, when I'm fisting, if someone calls me June, I know it's somebody I work for. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. So, uh, well, with 14 kids in the family, they were running out of names. With 14 children in the family, they were running out of names. How'd they come up with all the names? Grandma and Grandpa. Yeah. Willie? No. How did Grandma and Grandpa come up with everybody's names? Oh, I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they have, um, most of Mother's sisters, Mother's name was Hattie May. And she was the oldest. And, um, they have so many nicknames. We called one of them Aunt Ray. I found out her name was Rachel. And um, um, Aunt Velma, Aunt Roy, um, Aunt Goldie. Goldie was my buddy. She got me into quilting. I like that. I quilted over a hundred quilts in two years. My husband, Ooh. I got to stay at home. I didn't have to work in the yard or the big yard. And, um, I could do what I wanted to, and my husband didn't drive after he had a stroke, so uh, he liked to stay at home, and he loved working in the yard. And, um, and that uh, Anyway, it's been very interesting. A uh, hundred quilts. Mm -hmm. One hundred quilts. Did you? What did you do? Sewing so one hundred. How many quilts did you make a year? What? How many? Uh-huh. Oh, gosh, I don't know. I made baby quilts. Mm -hmm. I gave them all away. Only two I sold them. They made me take the money. One of them was a niece, and she sent me two hundred dollars, and and she said it was a check. Don't she dare tear this up. <laughs> and, uh, Were you doing it by hand? Oh no, I am. Um, I was trying to do it on my lap, which I did quite a few of them. And um, when after we moved, therefore I could go to garage sales. I had got groceries and I saw a garage sale. I took my groceries home, went back, and got there just in time. She had a, a um, sewing, uh, uh, oh, where we put your quilt on a quilt for a frame. And uh, I said, there, what do you want for this? She said, I just put it on Facebook. I told them I had it for $15. And uh, they, I haven't heard from them. And I said, I'll give you the 20. <laughs> I said, I like that guy there. My car is still like that. <laughs> but after that, it was a whiz. I could leave it. The kids was gone. And I had this extra room. That was my sewing room. Mm -hmm. I would, uh, each year, my family would meet in Oklahoma. And um, the one year we had 130 relatives and mm -hmm. a few cousins. And um, I'd always donate a quilt. That's how we paid for it. Anything we could make, uh, you know, just go like on. And if anybody was expecting a baby, I would make it quit on soon. The last one that I made was um, for Anise, her daughter. It's, uh, uh, 
have twins, and I waited, and if I told her she had a girl and a boy, well, I flew him in two weeks and had them one each, one a blue and one in pink this time, and uh, it turned out pretty good. <laughs> Did you have a favorite pattern? Uh, any kind, ask color. <laughs> I have seen so I most of them. Uh, I, the straps. Yeah. I'm, I'm a penny catcher. Yep. I kept them. And after I gave the frame to Donna and she donated a few, I uh, uh, looked in that and all those little diamond guns. I said, I'm going to sew some together. Well, they come out to six kind of flower kind. Well, I put some more there and held them together. I always wanted to make tumbling blocks. Mm -hmm. I've got the quilt. And it's, you, you can fold it out. One day I sprayed it on my bed and I thought, I didn't know I made tumbling blocks and how well it just tumbled. Too many points. Yes. <laughs> it's those too <laughs> many points. You had too many points, mother. You made too many points. That made the blocks. When you when you sewed it together, you had too many points and that turned into a block. It's in there, you wanna see it? No, no. <laughs> It kind of looked like a, a flower, I don't know. Yeah. And yeah. then when I put them all together, it, it made those blocks. It, it was meant to be. Yes, it and was. Yeah. But that's the last one I made. Had your mother quilted? Mother quilted. She would go and at the whole neighborhood would meet, usually at the depot, the head of I guess one of those cars or something they had them fixed up where they could go in there. And they'd sew all day. Um, maybe all week they would get a comfort each one. You know, and she would sew that way. And did she make your clothes? Mom did. And she, she, I never had a rotten dress until I was in seventh, eighth grade. And I had a few glasses. Dad wouldn't let us wear them. We couldn't wear uh, um, We could wear overalls or pants to, to pick on, but not out in public. We was not to be seen. And he was quite. <laughs> we didn't always listen to him. <laughs> Shame on <laughs> me. When I was 13, my sister was 14, and the other one was 16. We went to town, and Mother said, you all wear about the same size. She said, I'm going to, I want you to pick out a pair of slacks, each one of you. And then, uh, oh, I got for this pair. You know, Dad never said a word about us having. He would just be an honor. <laughs> no, he swayed to work. <laughs> but we, uh. So, how much older was the oldest child? You were number seven. Mm -hmm. So, was the first one a boy or a girl? And okay. I'm just trying to. Aunt Bonnie. How much older is Aunt Bonnie than you? I see. Bonnie, my older sister, mm -hmm. Bonnie was, uh, oh gosh. Oh, gosh. Oh. Allie and Ray. Well, when was Aunt Bonnie born? When was Aunt Bonnie born? I can no, 
I don't know. 1919, I think. Yeah. Okay. I thought 1928. Okay. Now, Allie was eight years older than me. Yeah. No, she had to be older. Spawning Allie, anyway, Ralph died before I was born with double pneumonia, little boy. And I lived. Georgia Church at Oakland. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Something great. Mm -hmm. A lot to keep up with. <laughs> so none of them were old enough to serve in World War II. Well, did your did your brothers serve in World War II? Did they go to war? No. They, he had high blood pressure while they wouldn't take him. Okay. And uh, George, he had a heart wound. They wouldn't take him. Paul was born with a lip rupture. So that he, he wasn't, he, nobody would operate on him until when he was getting ready to get married, he found out Alex's only son had the same problem. So uh, Dr. Joseph in Zapopo, um operated on Malcolm, and he told him, he said, you may be sterile and you may not. And then he operated on Troy. Troy had five kids and Melvin never. But uh, um, I don't think they were all going to, to serve in Toronto. My husband went to, decided that this place for him to go because all three of his brothers was in the service. And um, Floyd met me. And Mother said, God probably had something to do with that. <laughs> So he said they got on a bus and drove from, he was in El Centro to um, Sacramento. And when they got there, they said, the war's over, you boys can go back, they don't want you. <laughs> so he went back to his job. It, uh, it's all very interesting. And, so you had to you had to deal with some rationing, ra rations during the war. <laughs> so, during during the war, did you do rations? You remember those coins you let me have? Oh yeah. To buy food and during World War II, was it hard to get sugar and flour? Oh yeah. Yes, you had to be very cautious about the. Uh, Mama had so many kids that she could usually, you know, if, it, if the neighbors needed anything and Mama had it, they could have it. <laughs> and they, they, they all did that way. Yeah. And we raised you know, everything we ate. And um, of course, it had fine flour. And they always raised hogs. We had meat. And we always had cows. We had the milk. Um, I don't remember ever being hungry. You know? But um, she always had a lot of stuff around her. What, what was your favorite thing that she cooked? Popcorn. <laughs> peanuts. <laughs> roasted peanuts. Ash sherry. <laughs> tell her. I got some in her. Mother, tell about Grandpa's birthday. Grandma making each one of you a pie. Remember when Grandma would make your favorite pies? Oh, yeah. All right. Tell about that. What, what would I tell you? That for Grandpa's birthday, Grandma made each of you your favorite pie. 
Yeah. And then you could share it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, a lot of us would have, you know, the same thing, but she'd, she'd, she'd make um, pies for us, and then we'd cut them off, and if, if we wanted, we'd exchange, you know, okay. with each other. <laughs> um, what was your flavor? Oh, I think apple pie, probably. <laughs> when we moved to the farm, Albert and I thought that Farm um, hmm. at Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, when we moved there, yeah, we bought 60 acres. And we cut a mobile home and up there. Sold our house to pay for that. It was called a compact home, which it was beautiful and twice as big as my house. And then um, um, my husband, me and him, fixed the shed for some cattle. We bought some cattle from his brother. And uh, he had his tractor. He wanted a dozer real bad. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when we sold the house in Zapopo, we bought him his dozer. Well, he went around. <laughs> he fenced off the yard for me first and plowed me it. It was about an acre. And about half of it was, was something to I had the prettiest garden you ever seen. We we had a cellar going out there at that bright concrete room. And I I, I had a, my strawberries patches here and um I I tried everything. Um, asparagus, I never had raised it. And broccoli, always a first thing. Everything, oh, anything, lots of green beans and peas. And my sister was down there at Alley one time visiting us, and she said, I'll help you. I said, Well, I've got some onions I need to sell. Went out there, and she had them all planted. <laughs> she said, What's the use of stringing them out down there when they're growing? I said, okay, <laughs> after she went home, I wanted to get big, which they did. And um, it's, we just, um, oh, and the dozer, he got out and um, had some little ponds. I said, what are you doing that for? He said, I'm thinking about starting a fish farm. <laughs> he did. He had three ponds, and he was letting the neighbors do three, you know, the ones that we knew. This one man, he said, Albert, that catfish weighed 14 pounds. <laughs> That's all he wanted. He, he cleaned some. He didn't like the cleaning. And he wouldn't let me. I said, good, because I'm not going to anyone. <laughs> but, uh, I said, you've got to contract this out or they'll come and, you know, take the fish. And, and he said, I don't want to mess with that. And um, he said, but you can't see. Oh, it's all right. Sorry. It's okay. But uh, anyway, we finally uh, sold the place and moved to Sherry. So, but that was after we had the stroke. And a cat, a catfish farm. Blue pan. We left it, yeah. and then you know, the young man that bought it. He, I don't know what he did with it. I went back about five years ago and looked at it. And it uh, growed up, my house was gone. And we had another thing, we started an orchard. We had apple trees, 
and we had um, um, grapes, the produce grapes you would ever seen. We also had a raccoon. <laughs> he was seven and I didn't eat the grapes. But thank goodness, it's just one bill. She didn't bother the rest of them. <laughs> and then he never got tired of planting. He loved to plant stuff. My dad. He so, didn't care about kids on the That was your job? That was my job. Which was more work. I worked for the hour, but a lot more work. I loved implement. <laughs> I had my own strawberry patch. Everything grows so good. I think a lot of times if people was hungry, they could raise a lot of stuff. We'd have to learn how to can. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Were you, probably you having running water when you were a kid was probably a, a treat. Running water, uh huh. Oh, yeah, we, we had ponds, but we had a good well, too. Um, but when you were growing up, when you were growing up, was it hard to find water? When I was growing up? Uh -huh. Was it hard to find water? Um, you mean, no, to draw on the water? No, we had a good plan. That when a fisher mother says the hardest water she ever <laughs> she had to buy a lot of salt in her but uh, we've had no electricity. We never had electricity until we went to California. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, you did everything. <laughs> Kerosene lamps and all that stuff. Um, it was like a different world. How would you do bath? <laughs> bath time. Oh, no. Big old. Tub, what do you call them? Wash tub. A wash tub? <laughs> yeah. We had a um, a room that was all locked in. And uh, that's where the girls said, I think the boys went to the pond. I'm not sure. <laughs> Probably did. <laughs> but uh, the little kids, you know, we just let them play in the water out in the yard. But, uh, and laundry for 13, 14 kids. Laundry for the whole family. Laundry. Harvard. Who, who washed clothes? Oh no, mom. Jesus. That's a lot. We had the rug board. I didn't get in on that really much. I put my sister, she got up for set. And she wasn't going to draw on all the water. So somebody had draw the water. Troy and I, we draw the water. I have had a big um, uh, arm thing. She set a par under, under to warm it up. She put her sheets and things in there to make sure that they come out white. <laughs> and I then also had to do a lot of the like a mom helped them. But uh, it kept me and Troy busy drawing and carrying water to them. <laughs> so you would sit around the table and decide who did what? Who, who told you what to do? Who gave you your job at home? That was my job. Yeah, who told you to do that? Who taught me to? Now, who told you to to do the jobs, to get the water? Did Grandma tell you to get the water? Oh, yeah. It's Grandma. Yeah. Yeah. She was in charge. She said, all right, we're going to need some water. And then we would choose who's going to do it. So okay. all right. it worked out like that. And we'd, we'd hang our clothes on. She, she'd put a, some kind of a wire. You know, stretch it from maybe this building to the bar or something. And that's where we'd hang our clothes. Once in a while, they get in a hurry and hang them on the bottom of our fence. That's the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they get holes in almost the door. 
Well, what would you do for fun? What did we do for fun? Mm -hmm. Oh, everything. We Every once in a while, we'd have a party at our house. The neighbor, Daddy didn't get around and tell them all. And then had I told us he liked to play music. Sometimes they'd roll up to, we call them linoleums, and had the floors, and they would dance in there. While they was doing that, we had lights out and in the yard, there'd be a light thing shining. And the kids would all play out in the yard. And then, um, I don't know what we played, but we, we enjoyed each other. <laughs> Kick the can, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, probably did. Yeah. Talk, talk about, I told the kids, I said, you know, we was really poor, but I never knew it. We always had something to give somebody. And they did us if we needed. So. What about holidays like Christmas? Holidays? Mm -hmm. Oh, Mother's folks would come. <laughs> Here comes California. <laughs> it's a good thing that we had, uh, you know, the other kids, they, they would have places for some of them to stay. And when Albert and I, we was the only one left for a long time. And uh, we'd come back every two years, stay a month with them. Mm -hmm. And uh, they'd all gather at Mother's house between the come evenings and, you know, maybe Donna would go with one, Sherry with another, and Dad would be something. <laughs> That's fine, though. Oh, it was. Mm -hmm. It was uh, quite a lot. So you went to Kansas because you couldn't do the farm anymore? Yeah. Yeah. I'm just trying to put it all together. You you moved to Kansas because you had to, not really because you wanted to. Yeah. When Dad had his stroke, you moved to Kansas. Yeah. 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 Um, and we're there. Yeah. Until... He, um, couldn't, he couldn't work, you know on the farm and uh, he was sure he found a place for us and uh, yeah. so that's uh, how, we, how we did it. And then how did you get back here? Coming back to Stillwater? Well, sure and I talked. I said, you know, um, I uh, I would really like to be closer to Donna and see my great grandkids. And uh, she said, I guess she talked to little with John because uh, she said, Mom, would you ever think about moving to Stillwater? And I said, Tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she was ready. And she said, Well, we've been, we've heard maybe you didn't want to. And I said, absolutely not. I've been thinking about going halfway anyway, so <laughs> and so we was she wasn't the, um before she could even get her house in a paper, they had it sold. Mm -hmm. And um, they here well a judge bought it that Sherry knew. And then uh, mine just, it took about two weeks for mine. Yeah. That's still quick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but they'd already found us. We like not have found this house. <laughs> I didn't, I was like, Donna, I didn't think Sherry would want it because it's, you know, mm -hmm. but she really liked it. So, mm -hmm. um, is a mile away from us. So, you know, we're close, we're close together. I told her, I said, I could walk, <laughs> you know, to see Donna. Well, we hadn't been here no time till I uh, woke up in the middle of the night. 
had to go to emergency three different times before they found out I had some um, broke ribs. And I don't know. I fell in 2017. I think I probably cracked my name. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I didn't get to nothing. You were lifting when we told you not to, and we think when we were moving stuff. Stress. Yeah, stress. So it made my legs kind of weak. <laughs> yeah. But I can take that and go see Donna. Yeah. <laughs> you got to get up the hill first. <laughs> oh, don't tell Sherry. <laughs> Does she? No. <laughs> do, do you? <laughs> Have you tried? Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> I, I don't think I could the house. Well, coming but, down would be just as hard putting on the brakes. Yeah, right. she's just right down the road, so <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'm just three um, blocks away. So. And I, I, it's good to come back home. So where do you consider home? Where do you consider home? Oklahoma. I always stay in Oklahoma. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. I used to go take my husband and drive, and I could see the university. We never had time. I said, I want some time to go check the university. Don and Sherry did. They came down and looked it over yeah. the, the uh, university, but I didn't come with them. And um, um, so now I can, I had to get my car up after driving 27 years. <laughs> I started driving when I was uh, um, 15 anyway. George, my brother, let me drive his car. A, st a stick. Oh, yes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> When, when Donna was little, I left her with the neighbor that lived right next door there at Weed Patch, California. Have you ever heard that? Mm -hmm. We lived there for a little while until they could find us a home. My husband was a foreman of over 500 acres. And uh, as soon as they could get those people moved out of my home, I hope to go. <laughs> but we stayed there. So I worked at the Georgia and the packing, you know. I had that old car. Albert would ride to work with a friend. And so he always told me I'd have a car. So he'd leave the car. And I went out to, <laughs> it just got in one gear. I had to drive over a mile in low gear. The people I worked with, <laughs> He had to get out of the car somewhere and fix it with a pen. I wasn't about to do that. <laughs> so I told him, I said, he said, how in the world did you get home? And I said, I just walked. <laughs> good old life. It really was. Well, do you remember your first television? Getting a television? We didn't have any television until we moved to Kansas. We had it on the farm, but we couldn't get, we oh. had to have it. What well, about the first one you bought in California? The what? Remember the first TV we bought in Cal, you bought in California? You got one uh, station. I don't remember. Oh, I do. Had one station. And you had to get the whole house dark. Oh, yeah. Dark. Yes. Down the farm. Oh, yes. Yeah. You couldn't hardly see it. Okay. It was so far out that uh, you had to put a big antenna. Well, you got to do good. The wind just blew right down. Yeah. <laughs> We had a phone, uh -oh. and she, I didn't know she'd been answering the phone. One day the phone company called me, and I answered, and she said, if you don't keep your child off of the phone, 
they're getting complaints, you're on a party line, uh, we're going to take your phone out. And I turned around and she had, after I went in the other room, and I grabbed the camera. She's <laughs> you had to listen for your ring, you know, and uh, then you picked it up when it was your ring. As a party line. But if it rang, I just picked it up. You know? <laughs> um, I was probably about four. You know, <laughs> days. I almost got to Hawaii yeah, on that phone one time. <laughs> You might hear things you should. I'm tired of this. You you have had a good life. Yes. You have had a good life. Okay. Good life. Yeah. It's been hard it's, times, but good times too. I'll probably Donna's probably heard these stories over and over. That's <laughs> all right. I don't get tired of them. <laughs> oh. It's very been very interesting. And uh, yeah, I do it again. Did you do, do a mail order close like Ward's catalog or Montgomery Ward catalog? Catalogs, mail order, a mail order catalog. Did you remember ordering from the Sears catalog and Penny's catalog? Remember the catalogs we used to get? Well, Remember, we'd order clothes out of the catalog. Did you order clothes out of the catalog? Did we have a catalog? Yeah. Did we order clothes? Oh, did we order from the catalog? Oh, yes. Mother did. And she would uh, set us down. We'd all have to agree on what she picked out or tell her why. Um, she would, uh, she made all of our clothes and sometimes we'd pick out a dress in the catalog like we'd want it and she'd take newspapers and cut out the patterns. Mm -hmm. She made, uh, somewhere I've got my first shorts, Daddy would, he, we couldn't dare wear shorts, but <laughs> <laughs> she, I loved them. And she made uh, the blouse with the small leaves, fish leaves, and um, cut down the front into some shorts you could wear underneath them, or cut the pleated skirt around it down the front. And she'd make mine and open just like they thought was twins anyway. And um, my sister Ivy. She would uh, try to get in them. She was bigger. She tried to get in Opus because they fought all the time. <laughs> oh, geez. so how many boys and how many girls? How many brothers and how many sisters? Oh, I, oh my goodness! You had four brothers. Four brothers. So more girls. I have And ten girls. Now, there's, there's 11 of us all together that and mean, only three boys. Yeah, but there were four boys. There were four boys and ten girls. I mean, I'm not here. Okay. That's all right. That's okay. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. That, uh, Sorry, that's okay. <laughs> I mean, it's a big, big family. Oh, yes. It's a big, oh, yeah. And they decided that 14 was enough? Yes. Oh, my God. Well, the last one, Carolyn. Mother was. Uh, she's uh, almost a year older than me. My, mm -hmm. my mother, my dad, my grandpa, Smith. On a pretty nice place down close to Prague. And uh, he hired people to work for him. He had some sons, but some of them were still small. And uh, he would go to 
they they would usually meet at the at Prague on Saturdays, and anybody that was looking for work. Well, Daddy at that time lived down around Norman, but he, he didn't have no work. And he heard somebody was harmed. So he was up there and daddy hired him. Your grandpa. Quite a bit older than mother, but he um uh, um she was grown up. <laughs> she helped grandmother fix dental for all the work on the house and, and he met her that way. And yeah, she was 17 when she married him. And how, how, how old was he? I think I count him. He was about seven years older. That's a nice. Something like that. But, um, yeah, they had 14 children all together. Mm -hmm. um, two died at Warriston. And one for me longer. But to raise all the rest of us is amazing. <laughs> yeah. She, uh, my husband, um, before he passed away, he, before Mother did, he told her she, one of the last things I heard her say, I, I'm not headstone for my babies. And he said, Hattie, you won't have to worry about that. The first money we get from what we're doing on the farm, they're going to be out there. So uh, that's what we did. Mm -hmm. They each one got a headstone. <laughs> and are, where are they buried? In the two girls is buried at Bristol. And um, they is, they lived up there, and the little boy is with Grandma and Grandpa right to his Grandpa's grave at Calvary down here. Okay. Calvary Cemetery. And we go there sometimes. Yes, yes, we will. Um, I want to Albert see. and I and my sister Mary went down. Uh, probably about. 10, 10, 15 years ago. And uh, that was famous. They keep it up for the nice. Mm -hmm. And folks, the girls, the same they're fine. Mm -hmm. My sister and I put flowers out every morning. Mother and dad are in the office. Mm -hmm. And where's Albert? We're in Kansas. In yeah. Arkansas. I've heard about our headstones. I'll yeah. tell you, he's, he's buried at um, uh, Pockersville. Okay. You got it taken care oh, of then. Oh, yeah. oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> sure, he sees to that. <laughs> yeah. 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 We'll be going up there pretty often. Mm -hmm. Has it been hard to adjust without him? Has it been hard to adjust without Albert? Do you miss Daddy? Do you miss Daddy? Oh, he's always with me. Yeah, he was. Uh, um, nobody liked him unless he's your husband. <laughs> 59 years is a long time. Yes, it is. 59 years is a long time. Married a long time. Yeah. 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 If Dad had lived from April to September, it would have been 60. He was looking forward to 60 years. So what was the secret? Oh. What was the <laughs> What was the secret to your marriage? What was the secret? Uh huh. To a happy marriage. What secret? To oh my goodness! Yeah. Just be truthful. Yeah. Always be truthful. 
I uh, bad sinner. He always, always asked. He would ask me if I felt like it was all right for him to do something, and I was him. And I don't, we never, we never had any quarrels. Well, having a long ride from Oklahoma to California, you figured that out. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You know. One night we decided we wasn't going to make it to no motel, and we drove into a big park. And um, I thought, well, Alfred can get up here with me, and he can. He needs a rest because he's been driving. And. Um, um, we just drove in, and a policeman popped up. <laughs> he said, "Why are you folks doing?" And Albert said, "Well, we've come a long ways, and we're not going to be able to make it, but make it to, you know, to the hotel." And um, he said, "I thought we'd just take a nap." And he said, "This is a dangerous park." He said, "I don't think that you ought to stay." Here. So that meant that something, you know. So he said, okay, and we took one off. I don't remember how far we went, but uh, um, no, I guarantee you, he wasn't worried with Opal in the back seat. <laughs> Mother said she slept in the front seat, Opal in the back, and Dad slept under the car. You know, make sure they were okay. I think she was a 13 months older. I think I was married almost three years before she decided to find somebody. <laughs> and you know what? They fought all the time before they got married. And they fought all the time. <laughs> and it worked, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for quite a while, several <laughs> years. <laughs> She was a bitch. Quite a lot. She was tiny. <laughs> they both liked it because that's what they liked. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. they did. <laughs> um, is there anything you want me to ask? That, are we covered what you want to I cover? think we've covered it, yeah. You did good, Mom. You did good. Yeah. Anything else you want to say? Oh, I hope you didn't record all that. <laughs> yeah, it was good. <laughs> oh. Thank you for sharing. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you for letting her. Don't tell him. <laughs> Too late. He already signed the paper. <laughs> Dawn's probably going to do some years. Oh, it's okay. It's all right.